Hello and welcome. Simply put, the DC implosion was a catastrophic event for the comic book company in 1978. At the time it occurred, there were rumors that DC was going to be shuttered, and it would only remain in business to produce reprints of well-established properties such as Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. This would be done to maintain copyright and trademark, so these properties could be merchandised as toys, TV shows, and movies, if possible. Of course, that was simply a rumor, and may have never been a possible outcome. It probably reflects the concerns of DC staff more than anything. To understand the DC implosion, you have to take a step back and look at what preceded it. For most of the 60s, DC actually dictated the amount of titles Marvel was able to publish because they controlled Marvel's distribution channel. However, by the late 60s, Marvel was able to find an alternate distributor and they began flooding the market with their newer, shinier content. With the rise of Marvel, DC languished and seemed stagnant. This was due to the perception that DC published your parents' comics. They weren't hip or cool like Marvel. DC's characters, such as Batman and Superman, were relics of another era. And DC always seemed to be a few steps behind Marvel when it came to innovative concepts. Over the years, DC lost its dominance in the comic book market to Marvel, and by the very early 70s, Marvel was the top publisher in the comic book field. This loss of dominance in sales led DC to pursue a publishing campaign in 1975 that was marketed as the DC Explosion. Between 1975 and 1978, DC launched a total of 57 new titles. At the same time, their comics line increased their page count, rising from 17 pages to 25 pages per issue, with the extra pages usually being backup features. And they raised their cover price, going from 35 cents to 50 cents. It was during this period that they also began publishing the 80-page Giants. Some of the more notable titles that resulted from this rapid expansion were Shade the Changing Man, Black Lightning, Firestorm, and The Batman Family. Older, previously cancelled titles were also relaunched. This included Mr. Miracle and The Challengers of the Unknown. All in all, it was a rather aggressive publishing schedule. Prior to this expansion, DC published 34 titles per month. So 57 new titles, in addition to the 34 titles they were already publishing, gives you a pretty good idea of how aggressive this strategy was at the time. Although it is worth mentioning that some of the incoming new titles were replacing older titles with low sales and these new titles would be replaced with even newer titles when their sales flatlined. So the actual number of titles per month probably hovered around 60 at any given time. That's my best guess, I have to admit. Still, that's double their original output. One aspect of this expansion was to diversify their content. They added TV show tie-in comics like Welcome Back Cotter, Isis, Shazam, and Super Friends. And they added fantasy or adventure titles like Warlord, Stalker, and Claw. Of course, the bottom line was to make more money, and to accomplish this, they had to flood the newsstands with more material and more interesting material than the competition, Marvel Comics. However, this plan failed. And after three years, in 1978, DC slashed its output to only 26 titles per month. They were also forced to lower their cover price from 50 cents to 40 cents in order to be competitive, the end result being that DC published less titles than it had been prior to this explosion. Historically, the cause of the implosion is mostly blamed on the weather. The winter of 1977 and 78 was pretty brutal on the East Coast, and this affected comic book distribution. A lot of titles simply didn't get out of the warehouse because the weather was too terrible for them to be transported anywhere. This caused a massive drop in sales, which, obviously, accumulated over three or four months. By either May or June, when actual sales data was made available for those winter months, it was obvious the company was bleeding money. So, the decision to make dramatic changes was swift and brutal. While the weather was a contributing factor, there's another factor one can't overlook. DC may have had a diverse amount of content, but none of it was all that outstanding. In contrast to their competition, DC was kind of boring. As previously mentioned, this perception, whether real or imagined, is something the company had been struggling with since Marvel popped on the scene in 1961 and began dominating the superhero market. The final factor is that comic book sales in general were falling in the 70s, especially the late 70s. So this aggressive market strategy was launched at a bad time. All things considered, it was kind of doomed to failure from the beginning. The comic book audience was slowly but surely drifting away from the medium. For the record, the number of titles that were directly cancelled as a result of the implosion in 1978 is 20, 
with an additional 11 series that were completely new and were in various stages of development. There was another 11 titles that were indirectly cancelled because of the implosion. And these 11 titles were, in most cases, cancelled to make room for the 11 new titles that would be cancelled before they were even published. However, I do have to mention that the exact number of titles that were affected by this implosion is the subject of debate. Quite honestly, it's a debate I find too granular and uninteresting. So the numbers I've given may not be exact, but they're probably close enough that I don't believe I've misrepresented the impact of the implosion, which is all I'm trying to underscore here. Due to low sales, it was decided that the long-running Detective Comics title was to be one of the titles to be cancelled during the implosion. However, it was successfully argued by editorial that DC couldn't cancel the comic book that was their namesake. That would be far too much irony for the company to endure. So it was decided that the very successful 80-page giant, the Batman family, would be folded into Detective Comics. This was the solution that ultimately saved the comic from being cancelled. One of the proposed new titles that was never published was Mike Grell's Star Slayer. This series would end up at Pacific Comics for a six-issue run in 1982, before moving to First Comics in 1983. Following the mass cancellation, DC printed a two-issue series called Cancelled Comics Cavalcade. These two issues were limited to 35 copies each, and they were photocopies of complete and incomplete comics that were cancelled due to the implosion. This cheap, extremely limited print run was done to establish copyright and trademark on the characters in those unpublished stories. One copy of each issue was also sent to Robert Overstreet. Since Overstreet was a respected authority on comic books, he could confirm that these comics weren't an urban legend, should anyone ask. Of course, finding actual copies of these two comics is pretty difficult. Not just because of their rarity, but because they're easily reproduced. They are, after all, nothing more than black and white photocopies to begin with, and, well, any copy one sees should be approached with a lot of skepticism towards its authenticity. In the end, what was the impact of the DC implosion on the comic book industry? Well, a lot of people scrambled for work, but beyond that, uh, not a lot. Not a lot that I could see anyway. I mean, in the decade that followed, DC published some of the most enduring and most influential material in the industry. So possibly, and this is pure speculation, the DC implosion bruised the company's ego, and this put them in the position to try for quality material, rather than quantity. If I could have another moment of your time, I would like to ask that if you enjoyed this or any other Overlord Comics content, that you support this channel by subscribing. This ensures you're notified of additional content as it's made available. Liking, commenting, and sharing is also a very fine way to show your support. Thank you for your time, and I will talk at you in the near future. Until next time.